everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where we are going to find out if Amelia Russo is a fascist. She probably is, it's okay. But I just edited the episode, and I'm doing this after the fact, and there's probably, the audio is going to be different and everything. But this whole, like, cancel culture, wokeness, like, malarkey, it, it's hysterical. Like, this was seriously one of the saddest things I have ever seen. Like, this was, this was, oh, this was comical. Okay, um, let me get into some shout outs real quick before we start the show because i'm not going to be coming back for it after this this is just too much for me today so i want to give a big thank you to those motherfuckers over on patreon michael cedar harry you guys are awesome i want to give a big thank you to the thank you crew over on the youtubes i want to give a big thank you to julia to ethan to deb to jan to Britt, and to patrick you guys are the shit and then over there in the Anarchy Crew, the big swinging dicks. I want to give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to JH, to Chase, and to Tim G. And then finally, the biggest of all the big motherfucking thank yous goes out to the birthday girl herself, Caitlin. I hope you have a happy birthday and you're the shit. So. With that said, I want you guys to know, too, winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry, my new poetry collection is out now. Links will be down below. And guess what, Amelia? Nobody, like, canceled me and took this away from me. You want to know why? Because I don't expect the world to just give me every single thing in the world. I just do the thing. I do it. So why don't you, instead of bitching about everything, just put your own fucking book out and build your own fucking community. Now that Compact has given you a platform of a fucking martyr, there's a little fucking preview for you. I hope you enjoy it. So with all that said, on with the fucking show. Alrighty, so now I, I'm i pissed off and I have something to sink my teeth into. I gotta, oh, I'm so excited. <sighs> I would love to read this fucking chick's <laughs> articles on wokeness. Oh my god. Alright, so here we go, guys. I, I, ho I hope you brought fucking popcorn. Because this is... Uh, this, this is not going to go well. Okay. Now here's what I'm going to say. Right off the bat... Okay, this is from May 31st. This site looks gorgeous. I love the way this is set up. I, I really do. This is awesome. Um, and we're going to find out if Amelia Russo is a goddamn fascist fuck. Okay, so this is what their site looks like. I had been contaminated, so my book would contaminate their press. Oh, gosh. Just wait for it, guys. So I, I, I love the look of this site. I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I think it's a very, very good-looking website. But it seems like... Um, they're assholes and stupid pieces of shit. So let's see. I have to get my Amelia Russo voice. <clears throat> my fourth book of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kid. I kid. I'm sure she's super hot and intelligent and articulate. Hey, I had a crush on Renee Russo in the 80s, dude, or 90s. So that's all good. Look at this size queen talking about her fourth book of poetry. Okay. My fourth book of poetry, Magenta, was recently set to go to press with a small publisher of experimental writing. Shortly after the book was listed for sale on the publisher's website, I received an email from an editor informing me that my associations with people and entities, including this magazine, which is compact, he deemed, quote-unquote, alt-right or fascist-adjacent. The fact that she could say this and, like, have it not be like, oh, maybe this should, like, set some red flags up, had put the press in a really bad spot. She's really good with her quotes. He asked, look, this is the best part of this whole fucking thing. So everyone out there, pay attention to what's about to happen. Okay? 
pay attention. So, so this is this is the thing right here, okay? This is the humdinger. He asked me to explain myself. I respectfully declined to do so. You fucking martyr, you. Let's see. Let's see what happens when you decline to do so. The next morning, I awoke to an email from another editor. Oh, my God. They got all the editors on this. Someone I considered a friend... Stating that the publisher could no longer publish. Oh my god. <sighs> They're not going to publish Magenta. Jesus Christ. All they did was ask you to fucking explain yourself. And you declined to do so. How dare them ask you to fucking explain the fact that you have your writing in a magazine that people consider alt-right or fascist adjacent. So, my thinking here is, if this Fox News watching poet could not explain herself, that means that she probably fucking agrees with them. This has nothing to do with fucking cancel culture and all this other shit. It has to do with if you do something that insults their whole way of being and the people who read their fucking shit, why the fuck should they put you out? If you would have said, oh, I am not alt-right or fascist and I did not realize they were, um, okay, what would you like me to do? Like, what are we talking about here? What do you need from me? Or maybe you could have took the fucking high road and said, oh, you don't like me hanging out with my alt-right neo-fascist fucks? Well, fuck you. I'll put magenta out myself. Okay, then what happened? Th then what happened? Um, Amelia Russo. What does it mean to collaborate with someone? To write for a particular press or publication? To edit and publish someone else's work? To refuse to handle someone's work? It wasn't my words specifically that bothered the editors but the words of others I had associated with, spoken to, published alongside. The implication was that I had been contaminated, so my book would contaminate their press, harming their authors and readers. Well, here's the thing. If you're a piece of shit, and you hang out with other people who are pieces of shit, they might not want to be around you because you're kind of a piece of shit. So how is this like weird? Like the fucking the publishing world is all about nepotism and who you know. So if you like make people you know think that you're a piece of shit, they're going to not put your book out. I'm sure your book is awful. I'm sure your book sucks. But they were putting it out because, as you said, one of these editors was your friend. Well, what did you do? You pissed your friend off. This is what happens when you're fucking in a world built on fucking nepotism. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, I can't wait to hear what, what this fucking Joan of Arc has to fucking say next. The editor's actions made me wonder, where does the contamination end? How does the chain of infection spread? Are those I associate with now contaminated? Are some people, according to this logic, so contaminated that to speak to them about anything at all is to risk infection? In my correspondence, I told the editors, I believe we can talk to people, even work with people with whom we disagree. The drive to keep clean, severed of anything which we disagree, has authoritarian implications this is what drives me crazy these people who fucking think it's okay and see honestly the th sad thing is amelia russo could be a totally sweet person who is not right-leaning at all she just happens to know a bunch of people who are and she might also just happen to be published by magazines that are alt-right or fascist leaning is that her fault no but here's the fucking deal that everyone will fucking tell you 
all over the world forever. If you roll around in the dirt, you're going to fucking get dirty. Period. If you hang out with the bad crowd, you are going to get some of that on you. Like, this is like sociology 101, dude. Now, because your work is not being based on really if it's good or not, and this is all based on who you're friends with, there's a good possibility that the friends you have picked have completely fucked your career, okay? So, I don't understand what your problem is. On the other hand, any magazine, even the fucking the magazine you're writing in right now that has a very beautiful layout congratulations has the choice to put whatever they want out or not put whatever they want out it's their fucking business their job is not to fucking kowtow and please you a writer who got a book deal i don't understand why you're, you're so fucking shocked about this all you had to do was they gave you the opportunity. Like, can you, like, you know, defend yourself here? Like, what are we supposed to do? And you're like, I will not. I will not give you the satisfaction. Like, precious princess, like, who the fuck do you think you are that you don't have to fucking say, oh, yeah, dude, seriously, I know these guys over here. They're fucking nut jobs. Like, they're a bunch of fucking assholes. And, like, I don't like them at all, but they publish my shit, and motherfuckers gotta eat. If you would have said that, I'm sure that would have been fine, and everything would have been good. But no, you had to fucking get all fucking Tucker Carlson and go, how dare them cancel me? Hurry, let's go cancel Chick-fil-A, Target, and, um, who else is next? Oh, cra a Cracker Barrel. Uh, who else are we canceling this week? Oh, Bud Light. Ah. You, you bitch about this stuff. But then fucking, like, do the same fucking thing, dude. Okay, I don't know you. I'm putting a lot of shit on you. You might not even fucking be like this. Okay, like, it cracks me up how whenever anyone calls somebody alt-right or fascist, they go, that's authoritarian. Dude, like, do you know what fucking, like, fascism is? Oh, my fucking God. I publish with small poetry presses that value experimental work. Okay, what is so experimental about your work? The fact that you're a racist? The fact that you're a fascist? It, is that experimental to be an asshole? And then, like, just go, oh, well, I'm an artist, so it's okay if I'm a fucking piece of shit. Is that what's happening right now? Like, what is so experimental about your work? You use this word, but I'm guessing that nothing you do is unique. I mean, you fucking named your book Magenta, for Christ's sakes. That screams 1992. Oh. Um, I publish with small poetry presses that value experimental work, in part because I want relationships based not on networking and sales, but on a shared commitment to the strangeness of verse. You just fucking said that the editor who you thought was your friend fucking canned your ass. That is totally based on networking and you don't want them based on sales because you know your books don't sell jesus christ you can have your cake and eat it too everyone's having a good time but you okay um but in the areas of the arts least taken up with economic imperatives and moral economy has taken hold in which the work itself can feel secondary to its author's alignment or lack thereof with the causes given with the causes of a given moment. Okay, let, let's talk about this for a little bit. Okay, so you're pissed that this company won't put your book out now. Um, but in the areas of the arts, least taken up with economic imperatives. Okay, so basically, like, can we afford to put your book out? If we do put your book out, will, you, will your book sell? And you're expecting us to give you money for this too, correct? Okay, just making sure. Um, a moral economy has taken hold in which the work itself can feel secondary to its author's alignment. No, they're just saying those people are pieces of shit and we don't want to fucking hang out with shitty people. And if you're one of these shitty people, we probably don't want to like promote your shitty views. What the fuck is wrong with that? Dude, go back through history. You act like this just fucking happened. Ezra Pound. What happened to Ezra Pound? Think about it, think about it. What happened to Newt Hampson? Think about it. Think about it. 
What happened to fucking, um, what's his fucking name? The Marquis de Sade. Like, you could go down through history, and the f- funny thing here is, is that all these people were actually kind of shitty people. So, um, you know, if the shoe fits, within this moral economy, purity is strictly policed. But as the anthropologist Mary Douglas wrote in Purity and Danger, purity is the enemy of change. See, here the thing is, the alt-right people you're hanging out with don't want change. They want things to like stay the same or even go backwards to where things were. The progressive people who do want change, who want just everyone to be treated with fucking dignity and respect and to be aware that injustice fucking occurs, you're acting like are the the fucking status quo. You fucking idiot, dude. God, this chick, poor chick, your cross is so heavy to bear. To base a relationship on... Po- dude, shut the fuck up. Just say what you mean. Say, I'm mad that you guys fucking took my book deal away because I'm a racist. Just fucking say that. Jesus fucking Christ. The, the spirit of experimentation. Oh my God. What is she experimenting with? Like uh, the master race? Like what? What, what? What's your, what is this experimentation that you are so into? Like, are, are you trying to make an army of supermen to take over the world? To cancel a publication entirely as occurred with magenta is to attempt to purify the world of a source of moral contamination. In the words of philosopher No One Cares, such a- such actions ultimately destroy all complicity with what has gone on before. In his reading by the philosopher and poet Don't Give a Fuck, um, this other fucker writes that that fucker Thoughts rejected such radical breaks because to destroy all complicity with what has gone on before would involve purifying ourselves of the past. The break is done. Oh my god. Take your fucking bullshit out of here, dude. Okay, so she's just quoting people and then taking these quotes and making them fit into her um, thing. Whatever. Uh... Uh, by fascism that follows a fascist logic. In other words, to attempt to declare a writer or work uncontaminated by fascism is to replicate the obsession with purity, the purity of race and culture, the purity of party doctrine. Oh my God! That underlies fascism and related authoritarian ideological systems. Wow, you speak as if someone who really fucking is hard in this dude the funny thing is this chick is like all pissed that her publisher wouldn't put out magenta but like she just got this fucking deal with compact to put this article out and i'm sure all of these like fucking white power nazi purist fucking websites will put her stupid fucking book out and you, you probably got more attention from this than you would have with your crappy poetry. Oh, wait, no. Your experimental crappy poetry. Here's the thing. I could fix this whole fucking problem for you in like two seconds. Are you ready? I'm going to do it. I'm going to let you know how to solve this fucking horrific problem you're facing, Emil Yavrusso. Menfur. Here we go. This is going to fix everything. Put your own fucking book out. You don't need motherfuckers to put your book out. This is not something you have been privileged with. That, like, like I, I poet, so publisher put book out. Like, that's just how it goes. No, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like writing a stupid fucking article that just makes you look like more of a fucking lunatic than people thought you were in the first place. Nobody is obligated to put your fucking work out. If you act like a fucking psycho and a lunatic, no one's going to want to work with you except other psychos and lunatics. Stupid fucking idiot. Now, I don't know if this is the same article that brought all this up, but um, in another group, this came up about um, associations and if that is a big fucking thing. So I'm going to explain to you an association that I just... Um, got out of and I'm not trying to cause shit with this it's just a personal belief here 
I was going to go to this poetry reading and the poetry reading um, was taking place at a church. Now, I don't think that the poetry reading itself was like religious or put on by a religious group or anything like that. I'm sure the people who were putting on the event were just renting out the church. But I didn't go because I don't want to support a group that has caused civilization to be a bunch of fucking psycho, homophobic, racist, fucking lunatics. I think religion, I understand it could exist and that's fine. But I think religion creates more psychos than and fucking just horrific motherfuckers than anyone in the world. And I, I don't want to be a part of that in any way. I don't want to contribute to anything that takes place in a place like that. And I just don't want to have anything to do with it. That's my thing. And it's just because I don't believe in organized religion. It's made up bullshit that makes people feel superior to other people. And the funny thing is the people at the top of those things are just fucking ripping off the rubes. You know what I'm saying? And they don't have to fucking pay taxes and all this other fucking shit. And so, like, at the thing, it was like, oh, you could give us a donation, you know, but, like, we're, we can't, like, charge for money because, like, we're this kind of place. So, like, we have a suggested donation, which means give us this fucking donation or else. And I'm sure they're not like that. Like, the guy who puts on the event is fucking, like, seriously, like, the nicest fucking guy from everything I know about him and the little interaction I've had with him. But I just, I do not support that world. And I know there's a lot of really nice churches out there. That's great. Don't go there because you'll ruin it because no one's perfect. 90% of the problems we have in this country is because of people who believe in or at least pretend to believe in a pretend being. I just, I don't want nothing to do with that. And that's my fucking choice is a fucking person that I could choose who I support and who I don't. And when they gave you the fucking out, where all you had to do was say, like, oh, shit, yeah, like, I do talk to these people and they do publish my shit. Like, is this a problem? Like, tell me more. Like, it, instead of just fucking doing that, you decided to be all fucking indignant and precious and go, how dare you ask me to explain myself? Don't you know who I am? And I'm like, I don't know who the fuck you are, but your book sounds like shit. Anyway, yeah, if you hang out with fucking fascists, you're going to look like a fascist. If you hang out with Nazis, you're going to look like a Nazi. If you hang out with the alt-right, you're going to look like you are alt-right. If you are wearing a MAGA hat, people are going to think you're a fucking psychotic douchebag. Okay? So, um, and this has nothing to do with, like, no, fuck it. If a company doesn't want to do business with you because of who you run around with jesus fucking christ this isn't even fucking cancel culture they're not out there saying i bet they didn't put out a fucking article talking about what a piece of shit you are they just didn't want to put your fucking book out but you are the one screaming from the fucking rooftops that you have been hurt somehow that your precious pride has been fucked that nepotism did not work with you but now it's working with you here because now you're a little martyr, so Compact is going to fucking nail you to the cross themselves and make sure everyone pays penance. Fucking idiots, dude. Amelia Russo writes on Substack, and her most recent book of poetry is Confetti. Yeah, when I put it in the fucking blender and fucking pour it out the window. Um, oh, see, this is about literature and poetry and, oh, cancel culture and uh, uh, wokeness. Wow. Anatomy of Book Cancellation. Oh, wow. You guys are just really killing it here, dude. I love your site. Your site's beautiful. I love the colors. I love the look of it. But, um, you know, I'm sure there were a lot of attractive Nazis. Doesn't mean I want to fucking marry him, you know? So anyway, Amelia Russo, suck it. Oh, these fucking people. <sighs> Okay, 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 okay. I couldn't help myself. So I, I go I go to this fucking this this fucking website. Okay. I I'm still on their fucking page. So hashtag wokeness. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Okay, so uh 
something about museums hiding the past, whatever. Okay, this is the best bit. Okay, so on February 22nd, wokeness is here to stay. But guess what? On February 8th, wokeism is winding down. Wow. I don't know what happened uh, between those weeks right there. But shit, man. Like, they thought everything was, like, kind of, like, finally, this is ending. Nope, it's here to stay. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, these fucking people. Oh, they're talking about QAnon, too? Oh, oh, academic freedom died. Oh, wow. How unions fight wokeness. The reluctant... Oh, my God. Oh! <laughs> you want to know? Okay, hey, um, no, um, what's your name? Fucking Amelia Russo. Um, you want to know why they didn't like the fact that this site publishes your work? Why DeSantis is right to reform universities? Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, yeah. Going woke while Argentina goes broke. You give the right wing one fucking rhyme and they will fucking beat that to death. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, the economic left can beat the woke. Let's beat the woke. Let's all beat off together for wokeness. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's see what they have under cancel culture. They're talking about Gamergate in 2023. Uh, whatever. This site's fucking stupid. So, suck a dick, everybody. I'm out. The right is all about free markets and not having government overreach. So, all of the alt-right lunatics that are talking about cancel culture should be praising whatever company decided not to put out magenta. Because that's exactly what they say in their policies that they actually fucking want. But they're not. Amelia fucking Russo is just this week's Karen. It's it's like, it's, oh my fucking God. I said I wasn't going to come back, but I'm like watching through it right now. And I just, I can't, I can't leave without saying this. <clears throat> the one thing that fucking Amelia Russo never did was denounce this. All this article is, is her saying, oh, but isn't this fascism right back at me? Oh, this is so weird. All she had to do was say, I do not believe um, those views and those things. Um, I apologize. Like, that's all she had to fucking say. But instead, she runs to whatever fucking silo will fucking have her and lets her put out this fucking article explaining philosophies about people not liking people. Fucking the cancel culture on the right is all anyone's fucking talking about. All she had to do was denounce it. Just say, oh no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into that. But that was, that was below her. She could not sully herself by doing that. Why? Because she agrees with those views. It, it's fucking stupid. Like, I can't even believe I was... Like, there was a part of me that for a moment I was going, man, I was kind of rough on her. Maybe I should... No, fuck it. Fuck you. Fuck you, the horse you rode in on, and the fucking people that you hang out with. You guys are all fucks, dude. I'm fucking done. Um, you can buy my book. Links down below. Type hard, everybody. <laughs> and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.